the Counseling Solutions podcast for the day. I'm here with uh, one of our counselors who's been on staff for a couple of years mm-hmm. at Counseling Solutions. We want to introduce you to her, uh, get a little feel for what it is she can do and how she can be helpful to you. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Welcome to you. Okay. So tell us who you are and what you do for Counseling Solutions. Okay. Um, my name is Lisa Peterson and I am an LPC and LMFT. You may not know what that is, but it's a counselor and a marriage and family therapist. Okay. Um, I see all kinds of different clients. Um, okay. Who's, who's your perfect client? My perfect client is an adolescent experiencing anxiety or anger or just um, problems with emotional regulation. Our uh, young adults are older adults, all, all ages, experiencing anxiety, anger, or emotional regulation issues. So emotional regulation, mm-hmm. what does that mean? Um, that looks like um, they might be, somebody might tell them they're overreacting or underreacting to stuff that, events that happen in the environment. Okay. And so uh, tell us a little bit about your training. Um, I am, my undergraduate degree was in computer science. I worked for a number of years out in Silicon Valley and um, I then came back to Texas and I experienced um, issues within my own family and decided to go back and get a degree in counseling and specifically with an emphasis on marriage and family therapy Okay. at Texas State University. Texas State. Mm -hmm. Counseling and computers are pretty different. They are. Okay. There. And so are you glad you made that career shift? I am. I, I feel like it's been very rewarding. Um, I'm able, I feel like I'm able to exercise both sides of my brain in that capacity and um, with, you know, a challenge in both probably. And um, I, I enjoy talking to people. Even when I was in the, um, the t- high tech industry, People tended to gravitate towards me to talk about issues, those kinds of things, and I know that I enjoyed that. As so well. it's just kind of a natural part of who you are to sort of shift into this yes. field. Yes, okay. sure is. All right. And so um, you've been with Counseling Solutions two years. Mm-hmm. I hear you talk a lot about working with clients with anxiety. Tell us a little bit about that. Lots of folks have trouble with that? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, we generally start out with some relaxation exercises some suggestions that they might be able to implement in their life to sort of lower that threshold of uh, where they start to be overwhelmed every day. Um, and once we you know, get better handle on that, then we can start working on more of some other skills in releasing the anxiety or dealing with it as it comes up. Okay, so uh, what percentage of folks you think struggle with anxiety out there in the, in the, in the world? I would say um, probably everybody struggles at one time or another. At one time or another. Yes, with anxiety. So how do they know when they need to come for counseling for their anxiety? I, when it starts to impact their happiness or uh, even perhaps their job, they find trouble concentrating on things. Um, just uh, maybe somebody in their life has... Um, experiencing the side effects of it in a negative way as well. Somebody they feel is very important to them. Okay. So it, so it changes how, what happens in their family? Um, defense, fences are put up. Distancing um, family members might distance themselves from the person experiencing anxiety uh, due to feeling like they're walking on eggshells. Sure. Um, what, what are some of the common symptoms of anxiety? Oh, okay. They lose sleep. They may not eat. They are agitated uh, by and large. Maybe they have a hard time fulfilling the functions that they had previously um, not had issues with. Um, they may not express their emotions the same. So they kind of shut down. They do. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so what causes it? There are a lot of different causes um, that for anxiety, and it may be something that you don't even realize happened when you were young that resurfaces. Um, but a lot of it, it is that you never develop the coping skills to deal with it in uh, an appropriate way. 
Um, maybe your parents didn't model it for you. Maybe um, they took care of it for you before you even experienced it as a child. There's a lot of different reasons. Okay. Um, so do you, th you think that most, you think that the level of anxiety out there in the general public and society is greater than it was maybe 25 or even 50 years ago? Think people worry more? I do. I think um, a lot of anxiety happens more today due to our exposure to information uh, more than if, uh, we had years ago or that we have we can't get away from our jobs as easily because when we leave we're not really leaving our jobs we're always tethered by our cell phones or the internet um, socially there's a lot more exposure socially to drama um, with other people <laughs> and that's uh, a big story. can you say Facebook <laughs> yes <laughs> definitely Facebook is a, a big reason for more anxiety <laughs> today uh, but yeah there's all kinds of reasons for um, there's a lot of expectations today that we or our kids might have that maybe those you know that weren't there before more pressure high expectations mm -hmm, mm -hmm. gotta win at everything or you're mm -hmm. not anything mm -hmm. Um, so, so do you treat mostly adults or kids? I treat mostly adults, I would say. Adults and adolescents. Okay. So adolescents have lots of anxiety as well. Oh, they do. Lots of expectations on those poor kids. So what are, the, what are they mostly anxious about? They're anxious about what other friends think of them or, you know, what a guy might think of them. They are anxious about what their parents think of them. And they're anxious about their future and how they're doing in school. Um, and they're anxious about how they can deal with all that anxiety as well. Right. There's a, there's a lot more pressure on kids now to, I mean, they have to make some academic and career choices now as early as the ninth grade, yes. don't, don't they? They start trying to lead them in that direction already at that point. Yeah. I was mm -hmm. working with some uh, kids at a school a couple years ago and working with them with uh, the enrollment and my impression of that was this feels like it did when i was in college yeah yeah because they have to make some career choices don't they mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're exposed to that earlier and earlier as early as eighth or ninth grade mm -hmm. they get on a track or the schools are wanting them to do that yes and the difference to me is that once you're in college uh you're amongst a group of kids who have already made some decisions but more importantly they want to be there um, they've paid to be there, they have goals in mind, whereas in middle school and high school, you're still around kids who may not want to be there, they may not have similar goals, um, they might not even want to be there at all, uh, and are there because the law says that they need to be there, but they are experiencing a lot of other issues too. Um, sure. That, you know, tend to make it bleed into your, um, your environment. Okay. So when, when a client comes in and they tell you, I'm feeling very anxious, I'm not sleeping, I'm not eating, it's affecting my relationships, what's one of the first things you do? Well, we talk about um, their, their vulnerability factors um, to that emotion, and that would be things like lack of sleep, um, health issues, um, their abilities to de-stress, um, maybe even add some transition um, ceremonies from going from work to home, um, things like that. And then we typically, we typically practice a few relaxation exercises. What would be well. an example of a relaxation exercise? Uh, well, I have a sound bite of ocean waves and um, that sound bite actually has a theta binaural beats in it that help train the brain to relax even if you're resisting. So I, I use that, typically second session, to help them learn to uh, what the body feels like when it's relaxed. So we go through... You, you said bin, binaural beats. Binaural beats. Yeah, uh -huh. what, what, what is that? Oh, well, that's um, a sine wave that is much like uh, one that you would find during a sleep stage. So basically the soundtrack is sort of putting you in a trance, um, okay. similar to a light sleep. So does the brain, when they hear that, does the brain match that or follow that? How does yes, that, how does it, that follow, it follows it. 
um, and with that you're conscientiously trying for it too. So uh, it's an automatic response. Now where'd, where'd you come up with that? <laughs> Documentation. <laughs> <laughs> does, that, does it work? It does work. Um, I've had lots of my clients um, feel with just one session feel like you know that they're completely relaxed they've never felt that way before wow yeah it's very powerful and the more you listen to it the easier it is just to relax um, but then we go into um, a progressive muscle relaxation and we uh, may do a script at that point to talk to the subconscious mind that's hypnotherapy though right. um, and so do you do hypnotherapy I do I do um, primarily for anxiety okay. and uh, but we do other things too we talk about other exercises that can be done at the office at the desk anywhere you're at um, to help you uh, sort of minimize the distractions around you and get through the moment okay. so. get through the moment yes how important is that that's very important if you can get through the moment then you can um, calm yourself long enough just to be able to manage that emotion. And that's what it's all about. Having an emotion is not a bad thing. You just want it to be manageable. Okay. Want it to be appropriate as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes our emotions are, are overreactions mm -hmm. or, you know, we're, we're or, or, or maybe they're too intense for the situation, you know, yes. those, those kinds of things. Yes. So well, you help, help with that. Yes. Well, that's the part of the managing it. Uh, if you can manage that emotion, you can most likely uh, do an analysis and find out if that's appropriate or not. Figure it out in your brain without demonstrating it okay. and uh, experiencing the negative consequences from that as well. Okay. Uh, did I ask you where you got your training? Yes. Okay. Texas State University. Texas State University. Mm -hmm. And you've been at Counseling Solutions for a couple of years. I have. What's your favorite thing about working here? Uh, I like the clientele and the location. It's it's appropriate for me. Uh, mm -hmm. And the clientele is steady. And uh, there are, it's diverse. Um, never a dull moment. <laughs> and, and I'm going to ask this question because I ask it of all of our folks. The, the, the techniques that you've described and talked about, uh, how effective is it? So we want folks to know that when they come in, that there's going to be some real benefit. Mm -hmm. So what, how effective is what you do? Do you want a percentage or what? It, what yeah, you, you got I've one? Had, no. <laughs> okay, give us your best estimate. Of the num number of clients that, that come in, how many get better? How many are able to resolve some of those anxiety symptoms? Um, okay, I, I like the way you worded that, so I'm going to say 90%. 90%? Mm-hmm. Wow. Because you said are able to resolve some of those anxiety. It doesn't mean that they're going to, yes, it doesn't mean that they're going to resolve all of them. Um, that requires continual practice, um, even if you're not coming here. Can you get to that um, point where you sure. can resolve all of those? Mm -hmm. Well, you probably don't want to resolve all of them, <coughs> or you may not be able to resolve all of them but you can manage them and that's the important part. All right, so how do you know when folks don't need to come for, for therapy anymore? Um, they report that their life is better uh, and the things that they say in session reflect that as well. So not just what they say? No. Uh, you can, not, tell, you can the, tell a difference. Well, I can generally feel. I don't know for sure. Uh, I don't know that there's any you know absolutes but um, you, you, all we have is self-report sure and you, you but you rely on some intuition and some feel don't you of course but um, okay. okay and i always have to believe that the client is doing the best that they can um, okay so what's the most difficult thing about the work that you do um i think the most difficult thing about the work that i do is has to do with couples and the fact that couples don't typically come into therapy um, until they're in crisis and that's very difficult to, almost till it's too late yes yeah one has usually already made a decision about what they want to do um, and so that's very difficult I find that's not um, that's a very difficult thing to to handle um, 
to get them to buy into enough sessions to believe that they can handle this a different way. Okay. So you do some couples work as well. I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So typically, and I, and I know, you know, it's different with every client. What's an average number of sessions for a couple who comes in? Um, eight would probably be average. And in eight sessions, can they get better? They can get better. I don't know that they, you know, they're at the point that they can be 100% successful all the time, although I don't know that that's possible with any number of sure. sessions. Sure. Uh -huh. But they can certainly be better, do better. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about the couples therapy that you do. Um, What's typical? Uh, we talked, mm -hmm. most couples complain about communication. So we, uh, most of the time we talk about languages of love, which I know a lot of people have heard about and we sure. talk about, you know, what works for them. Um, and we talk about um, compromising and conflict resolution, those kinds of things. That's a big and, issue. Mm -hmm. And being there for each other. Yeah. Okay. And what other kinds of things do you emphasize in the couple's work that you do? Mm -hmm. Communication, conflict resolution, mm -hmm. being on the same page, mm -hmm. just being able to talk about things. Forgiveness. Just forgiveness. Yeah, that's pretty big. Well, that almost sounds like a religious concept forgiveness it's not really why is why do you use that in couples counseling uh, because in order to move on you have to understand that things have happened in the past that you can't do anything about and it's not necessarily necessary to understand them um, but it is necessary to forgive them and uh, going forward not to bring them up in arguments and that's what forgiveness is that you say I can't change what happened uh, I don't have to understand what happened. I know that it happened, but I still love you and I want to move on. And I'm not going to, I promise not to bring this up in arguments in the future. So making a decision that to, just to let it go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how important is that in couples work that That's you do? That's very important. Okay. Because they've come because they've had some kind of crisis. Yes. Uh -huh. They've been hurt. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So tell us the, the future for you in terms of the kind of counseling work you want to do. You, you love what you're doing now? I do. I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing now. Okay. All right. Well, listen, we appreciate you visiting our podcast today. Um, uh, it sounds like she's a very skilled person. And so if you're a couple that needs some help or if you've got some anxiety issues, come see us at Counseling Solutions. Thanks for visiting us and have a great day. Okay. Hope, hope we got that.